That is fair. And it also comes to mind, I might have been a bit hasty in my desire to complete my transfiguration class. It seems as though it is still rather late. So I think it's best I'm off to bed. Ah, what a bright and wondrous morning. I heard Professor Weasley transfigured the book with all her test answers into an owl to stop students from cheating. That makes sense. Taking uh, owls a bit too literally of Let's get to class. Just be careful not to upset her though, or she might set a venomous tentacular. Beautiful. <gasps> Goodness. Settle down, settle down. Transfiguration, as you may be weary of hearing me say, is an exact science that can take a lifetime to master. But we needn't be daunted. Almost anything can be transformed if you can just perceive the potential within it. As I see in all of you, tremendous witches and wizards, every one of you, or it could just be my eyesight. Now, you all know what to do. Transformation. Nice arcing motion. I did it. But I feel that Beautifully done. that was rather simple compared to what transfiguration could Class is dismissed. be. And remember, now is not the time to ease off your studying. OWLs will be here before you know it. Um, this one. I'd like to put transformation there interesting perfect hello professor you wanted to discuss my progress so far this term professor i did you seem to have had no trouble in getting up to speed not and at frankly, all frankly excelling in your schoolwork this year thank you the assignments have helped quite a bit Thank you, Professor. The extra assignments have been helpful. As I suspected they would be. Now it seems you've been making good use of the opportunities presented by your field guide. I'd of say course, so. the guide isn't the only measure of success. Of course. Deke tells me you captured a unicorn and brought it back to the room of requirement. Protecting so rare a beast is an accomplishment of which you can be quite proud. It's rather Thank impulsive. you, Professor. But I yes. will say I'm especially impressed with all you've accomplished in light of the rumours of your extracurricular activities. Was your visit to an ex-aura in Upper Hogsfield connected in any way to Professor Fig? I can't begin to imagine what that was about. Um... Perhaps. Professor Fig has encouraged me to explore when I can in uh, an effort to complete my field guide. I see. I admire your penchant for learning, but do remember that your classwork and field guide are designed to educate you thoroughly. Of course. It'll be the end of the year in no time, and you'll want to be well prepared for your OWLs. I'll provide a final assessment at that time to ensure that you're ready for your exams. Perfect. Until then, well done. You are dismissed. Thank you. If you wish to practice the spell you just learned, the training dummy is available. Oh, perfect. Glad to see you were paying close attention to my demonstration of the transformation spell. I certainly did my best. That might be a very handy spell to have in one's arsenal. Since our visit to Feldcroft, something dawned on me about the triptych. Meet me at the Overlook, just north of the Forbidden Forest. And I'll explain. Hi, Gareth. 
My plan with the helmet failed, but I have another idea. I think we may be able to find what we need at a goblin mine south of Hogwarts. Meet me there, and bring someone okay. who speaks gobbledygook. Uh, I remember our meet mentioning something about gobbledygook. Hello, Gareth. Hello, Gareth. So, has your aunt been taking it a bit easier on you lately? Unfortunately, no. In fact, a few days ago, she gave me a detention. I was only testing a new recipe in a, mostly, empty classroom, and the fire was put out quick enough. So you... what were you creating? You don't create anything worthwhile without setting a few things on fire. Agreed. Innovators like us are unappreciated in our time. Can't let the doubters sway me. When they taste my latest brew, they'll forget their criticisms and the fires. It'll be bigger than Butterbeer. Oh, that gives me an idea. Better write it down. Best of luck to you. You as well. Try not to burn the school down. Although, with this wintry weather, a little bit more fire, heat, warmth wouldn't be a miss. He often asks after you and his hours. Um, right. Who would have thought so? Sebastian wanted to talk with me in the shadows of the mine. Waiting to the entrance to the Overlook Mine in North, in the Upper Hogsfield. All gobbledygook. I need to find a meat and then he sent me another owl? About the scriptorium. He wants to meet in the Undercroft. What did he say? Since I've visited Feldcroft. Nope. I've been studying Salazar Slytherin spell, but meet me in the Undercroft. I've found something. Okay, well that's... A Still within the school, so I'm uh, hoping that he hasn't left for Upper Hogsfield yet. Save my uncle's life. That'd be rather frustrating. So let's go to the Undercroft first, <laughs> and then maybe go find our meat. I don't know. Oh, Sebastian, where are you? Um. Lumos. Right. Oh. Don't use disillusionment to play pranks on me. It's rude. What did you discover in the spellbook we found in the scriptorium? Salazar Slytherin's spellbook was a little difficult to interpret, but fascinating. Evidently. He encouraged teaching dark magic at Hogwarts. Neither the Imperious Curse nor the Killing Curse was unforgivable during his time. He believed students should be prepared to use dark magic when necessary, not to fear it. That's why we had to use Crucio to gain access to the Scriptorium. He didn't want his knowledge shared with anyone who was afraid of the power of dark magic. Um... I tend to take a slightly different view with that. I mean, we did do what we had to do to get out of there alive. However, just because it wasn't unforgivable in his day doesn't mean it is permissible now. Least of all by a bunch of fifth years. Had I known what was involved and what was entailed in the scriptorium, Beforehand, I probably would not have gone along with it. I probably would have taken Ominous's uh, approach. I know we had to do it to open the scriptorium, but it's not something I'd want to repeat. And I'm glad we did it, because in the spellbook I also found something else. References to a lost relic, which, from what I can tell, grants the holder the power to reverse dark magic curses. 
And you think this relic might be able to save Anne? Precisely. I plan to search for this relic, but I don't think we should tell anyone. Especially Ominous. He wouldn't understand. I'm torn. Ominous was there when we went into the scriptorium. He's an ancestor of Slytherin, so based on that alone, he does have some right to know, seeing as that book should technically be his, even though he didn't want anything to do with it. I think it's best to not leave him in the dark about our activities going forward that could make us cross paths more with his heritage. We need to tell him. He's the reason we found the book and he deserves to know what you've learned. You've seen how he frets about the dark arts. I promise I'll tell him when I found the relic. When I know more, I shall send an owl. And don't feel sorry for Ominous. Keeping this to ourselves for now is for his own good. I'll decide what's for my own good. Ominous, we were just about to get some air. Care to uh. join? You're a liar, Sebastian. I heard everything. You swore you'd never engage in anything to do with dark magic again. No, I didn't. I said I understood you wanting that. I'd never swear to give up on finding a cure for Anne. He did. You don't know when to that. stop, do you? I know when not to stop. Leave this alone, Ominous. I'll be on my way. Ah, oh, Sebastian. I am not letting this go. What a fool. Ominous, Sebastian meant well. I appreciate you telling Sebastian not to keep this from me, but going after that relic is not a good idea. I would tend Sebastian to agree. Sebastian doesn't even realize it, but he's as irresponsible and reckless now as his parents were years ago. It's why they died. What happened to his parents? I knew his parents died, but I never heard what happened. Mr. and Mrs. Sallow were professors spent nearly every waking moment in the cellar library. Nose is buried in books. Anne and Sebastian were upstairs when it happened. They heard a sudden crash and ran downstairs, but it was too late. Their parents had crumpled to the floor. A defect with the lamp in the cellar caused the room to fill with an undetectable toxin. Sebastian and Anne were helpless. They had no magic yet. What a horrible story. It is. That's why I can't understand Sebastian's recklessness. I've practically lost Anne. I cannot lose Sebastian, too. Please avoid anything to do with that spellbook. The spellbook is quite concerning. I will give you that. Some references Sebastian mentioned in the book do worry me. I'm glad you understand. I hope Sebastian pursues this no further. But if you think he might, Please, let me know. Oh, I'm certain that he will. It would mean a lot. Of course. If... If he changed his mind and didn't pursue that anything in that book, I'd be astounded. So we just need to keep an eye on him, save him from himself, and make sure he doesn't do anything ridiculous. Unless, of course, he's fighting a boggart. Then, of course, he needs to do anything ridiculous. Right. Now. Our meat should be around here. He usually hangs out in this tower. Shadows of the mind speak to our meat. Yes. Uh, he's usually up a few floors, which is probably easier. I'm right here. What are you up to now? Oh, 
That was a very accusatory tone. I am merely exploring for my friend. Oh, pardon, pardon. In order to obtain this help with the translations and stuff of gobbledygook. Language of goblins. It's usually up here in the study lounge. Um, no. Hi, Arthur. No, no, don't want to chat. Um, very well, I guess he's... Up the astronomy tower? Oop, pardon, pardon. Um, I would have preferred not to have to walk through the ghost, but... So be it. Oh my goodness, he just... Don't mind that. It's a weird wall. Uh, my field guide's strange. It's indicating that there's someone wanted to chat to me on the stairs, but there was no one there. Um... You just had to pick the most inconvenient location, didn't you, Amit? Like, for real, my goodness. I would have flown up the bloody tower if I would have known you were all the way up at the top. Hello, Peeves. Up to your normal mischief, I see. Oh, my goodness. Getting my workout in. Some promising news about the location of our Hebridean dragon friend Ooh. and where to return her, you know what. Meet me in the town circle in Hogsmeade. Perfect. Hello there. Hi, Amit. Hello, Amit. Do I recall you saying that you speak gobbledygook? I did. I mean, I do. Speak it. Is this to do with the goblin I saw you with in Hogsmeade? It is. Yes. His name is Lodgok. We could use your help with something. He's waiting for me near a goblin mine. Would you be willing to help? Of course! How exciting! I mean, well, might this be dangerous? I think he simply wants to show me something that involves gobbledygook. If it helps, he's a friend of Serona's. Good to hear. Good to hear. If Serona trusts him, then I feel much better. Perfect. And how well do you know gobbledygook? You said you know gobbledygook, but how well? I've been reading it for as long as I've been reading English. My parents have an extensive library. Once I grew bored with the classics, I devoured goblin writings. I'd tell you some titles, but you wouldn't understand them. True. And have you ever met a goblin? Have you ever spoken directly to a goblin? Unbelievably, no. I'm so looking forward to it. Actually conversing in gobbledygook with a native speaker. Cannot wait to confirm subtle bits of pronunciation and tone that may have eluded me. Being self-taught and all. Very well. Let's head over to the mine then. Uh, Lord Gok is waiting. Should we go? Of course. I just want to check the pronunciation of a couple of key terms first. So I will meet you there. Perfect. Can I... Of course, I can't just get on my broom and fly from the astronomy tower. That'd be too convenient. Uh, so I have to descend all the way back down. And... I believe everything's going to take me through Hogsmeade, so I might as well just go right there. Um... Nope. Yeah, it was worth a try. Ooh! I tried to protect you from Peeves. Peeves is... Peeves. Peeves. Not a lot you can do except for just ignore him. Unfortunately. Um, Ignatia. There you are. Off on another adventure. Yes, yes I am. Adventure, adventure. Um, interesting. 
let's go to South Hawksmead. What have we here? Hello, pardon me. Hello. Hello there. Was there something you needed? Hello. I was wondering if you would be interested in having your own shop and a house elf to help you with it. Penny's the name. Penny's mistress is selling this shop. And Penny is most eager to start working with the new owner. It might surprise you to know that Penny can sell practically anything. Oh. That would be quite interesting. It helped keep my pockets a little bit lighter of stuff. More full with coin. Oh, it would be wonderful to have a place to sell things and someone to help me. You'll be able to give Penny almost anything that you want to sell. It will be no work at all for you once the shop is up and running. If you want the shop and Penny hopes that you do, you should talk to Penny's mistress as soon as you can. Her name is Cassandra Mason. Why is your mistress selling the shop and you? Mm, Penny cannot be certain as Mistress Mason so rarely confides in her. Oh. Mm, however, she repeatedly mentions how tired she has become of trying to let the shop. She has had rotten bad luck with the last few tenants. <sighs> What's wrong? Are you all right? Are you holding your breath? <sighs> Penny's fine. Sometimes Penny simply needs to remind herself to stop talking. Okay. You said that you could basically sell anything. What kind of things would I be able to sell in the shop? Anything from Essence of Disney to Mooncalf fur. If a buyer exists for something, then Penny can sell it and Perfect. get the best price. Just ask Mistress Mason. Even better. Um, it looks like it could do with a little bit of um, fixing up. Why are the premises in such disarray? Oh, the previous tenants were not mm, able to manage very well. They oh, seem to have okay. given up rather quickly. I see. <gasps> Penny is perfectly capable of helping clean and repair, so the shop will be ready for business in no time. I believe it. And how did you learn your skills to be so good at selling? How is it you're so good at selling? Seems unusual for a house elf. Oh, before he died, Penny's previous owner, Master Mason, trusted her to do all sorts of things to help him with his shop. Penny supposes it is a bit unusual for a house elf to possess such skill. But Master Mason commanded it, and Penny was happy to oblige. Master Mason was a wonderful master. Very well. I shall talk to your mistress. <laughs> All right. I shall go and find Madam Mason. Oh, this is splendid news indeed. You won't be sorry. You can find Mistress Mason at her home on the north edge of the village. Penny does hope she gets to work with you. Hmm. Yes, it is in a general direction of which I have to go already. Because I believe Poppy is in the town center. So I'm like, might as well. Yes, she wants to meet somewhere over here. So, while well, I'm. I don't see her, so while we're waiting. Let's go have a little chat with Madam Mason. Hello. Hello, Madam Mason. I understand you have a shop to sell. Why, yes. Yes, I do. Are you interested? I am. I'm currently in an info-seeking stage. Perhaps. It depends upon your terms. I think you will find my terms quite generous. But, and do please forgive me for asking, don't you think you might be a tad young to own a shop? Um, not at all. I mean, what better time than to start young to make your mistakes early? 
so that when you become older, you've already gotten past that early stage and are therefore potentially more successful when it matters more. I have a knack for this sort of thing, if I do say so myself. If I can meet your terms, I hope that you'll sell to me. Well, I reckon you have the confidence needed for such a venture. And of course you'll have Penny to help you. That elf could sell tea to a troll. So oh, she said. She told you she comes with the place. She did indeed. I like you. Tell you what, I shall sell you this space for an exceedingly fair price. I think you might just be shrewd enough to make a go of it. Hmm. An exceedingly fair price for a shop and an elf. What's the catch? Probably huh? no merchandise. You are wise to be wary in business dealings. No catch, really. I simply ask that you allow me to do you the favour of buying the shop back. At a discount, of course. Should your efforts fail. I see. The last thing we need here in Hogsmeade is for one bad apple to spoil the barrel, if you get my meaning. I get you. I believe I do. Yes. An unsuccessful shop would be bad for nearby businesses, I'd imagine. Quick one, you are. Do we have a deal? Why have the others failed? It looks to be rather a mess. Why haven't other tenants been able to make a go of it there? As you've no doubt considered, running a shop is not as simple as those less savvy might think. The new owner, however, will have something that previous tenants did not. The benefit of Penny's particular prowess. Her assistance will make all the difference, I should think, in both getting the shot ready for business and ensuring its success. Okay. And why is it currently empty? The shop seems to be in an ideal location. Why has no one purchased it yet? It is indeed. But I've just decided to sell. I've grown weary of being a landlady. My late husband mm -hmm. was the one with a passion for shopkeeping and business in general. But you're You'd be to buy wise it back. to take advantage of this opportunity before the offers start rolling in. Right. And by your standards, what constitutes a failure? What precisely do you mean, should my efforts fail? Honestly, I only mean that if for some reason you're unable to keep the shop going, I could help you cut your losses. That's all. But, as you've implied, the odds of that happening are remote. Oh, very true. I am very intrigued. It does sound intriguing, but I need to consider my finances first. I'll come and find you if I'm interested. Very well. But I won't be able to keep the shop available for too long. Classic. If you do want the shop, I'd advise you to return to me as soon as possible. Very and well. Again, you know, oh, 1500. I've got plenty. Penny. Madam Mason, about the shop. Yes? I've decided I'd like to go ahead and purchase the shop. I have to say I'm impressed. You are a remarkably resourceful student. I am indeed. And brave. You won't be sorry. Give me the money, and I shall get the paperwork filed immediately. Perfect. Pleasure. Wonderful. Shall I head directly to the shop? Please do. Oh, one more thing. Since my husband died, I've not been able to bring myself to retrieve some of his personal items. They're in a chest at the back of the shop. Penny has the key. As you get organised, I would be terribly grateful if you could help an old widow and gather his things for me before you open for business. Of course. I wish you the very best of luck in your endeavours. Penny will meet you there. Well. And suddenly, just like that, I'm now a small business owner. This town has a funny way of, well not just this town, in general there's a funny habit 
that things make of putting very random distractions in your path. For instance, came here to speak with Poppy about a dragon. Anne is getting worse. If there is any chance that the relic from Slytherin's spellbook can help her, I must find it. I'm requesting your help. Meet me outside of Feldcroft, near the catacomb. And now I have had two things that will end up drawing me away. Firstly, a new business that I own that will essentially be run by a house elf named Penny. Secondly, more delving into the dark arts with Sebastian against my better judgment. I best get along before something else comes up. 